I'm Dr. Christopher Kobe, and I'm a neurosurgeon, and my practice is Premier Neurospine Institute. We're here today to talk about sacroiliac joint uh, pain and treatment options. The anatomy of the sacroiliac joint is a sacrum interacting with the pelvic bone, the iliac bone. The role and function of this sacroiliac joint is really movement connecting the spine to the movement of the lower extremities. It's a buffer zone, so to speak. SI joint pain is caused by uh, any type of activity that can place stress or strain on the joint. It typically is provoked by inflammation in the joint. That inflammation can come from multiple types of things like childbirth, involvement in an accident that puts trauma or stress on the joint, and also uh, just daily wear and tear. Arthritis within the joint can cause this type of pain. SI joint pain can be quite common. We can see it in patients, particularly in those who've had some type of spinal uh, surgery in the past, uh, up to about 40% of patients who've had a prior lumbosacral fusion surgery can develop these type of pain symptoms. It is important to determine exactly where the pain is coming from. These type of patients can develop adjacent segment problems coming from the spine or may have some arthritis in the hip. When I see patients with sacroiliitis, they usually complain of pain in a specific location right over the joint, off to one side or the other, not right down the middle of the back, just above the buttock area. That type of pain can be provoked or exacerbated by certain types of activities, anytime mechanically placing load or stress or strain on the joint. So activities like going up and down steps, getting up and down from a seated position to a standing position, uh, even walking sometimes can create that uh, type of pain as well as getting in and out of a car. Activities that tend to relieve these symptoms uh, are any sort of activity that places the joint at rest or removes the stress or strain on the joints. And once they've presented this type of story of their pain uh, in the clinic here on exam, I'll push on or palpate certain areas. There are several provocative maneuvers we do here to pinpoint a pain to the sacroiliac joint. When I've diagnosed a patient with sacroiliac joint dysfunction, I perform the eye fuse procedure in a minimally invasive fashion. Uh, first involves the patient going under general anesthesia and then making an incision on the side of the hip and buttock area. Uh, this allows an approach to place a pin that we're utilizing multiple views of our x-ray machine to place across safely the SI joint. Eye fuse is then advanced over the pin uh, and the pin is removed. The recovery process after a I fuse sacroiliac joint fusion surgery. We tend to limit or decrease the patient's activity, stress or strain on the joint. Uh, I do like to see the patients up and ambulating in a, in a manner that takes a little bit of pressure off the joint for about four weeks. After that four week period of minimal stress or strain on the joint or activity levels, uh, then we would get the patient back into a physical therapy program with the intent of increasing the uh, weight bearing and pressure on the joint and get the patient really back to their full activities at that point. The confidence uh, I get from utilizing the eye fuse as the best option comes really from several things. There's clear-cut uh, data to support the use of this device providing effective and safe treatment outcomes for the patients uh, really over the long haul. In addition, uh, I've seen in my own practice uh, the effectiveness uh, and success in fusing the joint with this particular device. One of the common things I hear from patients who have come into the office and we've made the diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction as the cause of their low back pain is, doctor, why haven't any of my other providers uh, made this diagnosis or suggested these treatment options for me? I think the obstacle, the challenge these patients face is that back pain is very common and uh, this diagnosis is really a clinical diagnosis. It's made putting hands on the patient. It's not one that can be made by just ordering a radiographic study. If you're experiencing these type of symptoms that we've discussed today, uh, I would encourage you to uh, come see us here in the office for a full evaluation and we can discuss the diagnosis and treatment options with you.